Hey, how's it going guys? Long time no see. I apologize for the lack of uploads lately. Uh, school has been a bit of an issue. It has been pretty bad this semester. So I've been very busy doing a lot of studying, do a lot of, you know, prepping for exams and stuff like that. You guys know how it is, but I wanted to release this video. I wanted to get it done sooner rather than later because one, I think it's a great video. It helps a lot of people and two, it's a freaking video with Apple Ocean. Like, come on, like, who's not gonna love that? Who's not gonna wanna upload that? I just, I apologize for the lack of uploads and also I apologize to Apple Ocean for this video not really coming out for like months. I don't know, I forget when we recorded this, but it's October 30th, the day before Halloween when I'm recording this and it's been a couple months. And so I do apologize for that. I wish I would have gotten this out sooner. There's some information that he talked about that is basically, he talked about a video that he was gonna be uploading in a video that he was working on. He had uploaded it already. When you guys hear that section, just, you know, go check out his video. I'm gonna link it down in the description below. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to do something like this again in the future. And I hope to upload more videos for you guys in the future as well. Thank you, bye. Hey, what's up guys? So today I have a very special guest, none other than Apple Ocean. We are going to be discussing Greninja stuff, kind of like how I did in my last video with Andrew. Uh, we're just going to be discussing like Greninja stuff, giving you guys like tips and tricks maybe, and just discussing like where we think that Greninja sits in today's meta. Without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and give him a moment to introduce himself and if you guys for some reason don't know him. All right. Well, what's up everyone? I'm Apple Ocean. Um, a lot of people call me Apo, that's pretty cool. Pretty much, I am a Greninja Labber that has a little bit of a reputation in the Smash community for making content centered around Greninja and pushing the meta as much as possible. So I do a bunch of stuff from labbing to matchup breakdowns to really just anything related to Greninja. And I'm more so kind of an edutainment guy. I'm not necessarily a competitor in my opinion, but I can definitely provide insight on the frog and that's what I've been doing, and that's how I've made my YouTube career. All right, awesome. Well, thank you for that. Thank you. So yeah, we're just going to go ahead and get right in. We'll be just like kind of discussing and talking, so it's going to be more like chill and relaxed. I'm not going to be playing Greninja at the moment because everyone knows Greninja does suck. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, but, you know, and then later on, what I do want to do is like a first of five where, where we're like seriously grinding and like, you know, kind of like trying to win. Okay. Um, so like, you know, just like a fun little like serious moment at the end. But for now, we'll just kind of talk and discuss. I want to just discuss a little bit about you first and like kind of how you kind of came up with Smash. So everyone, of course, you know, like they play Smash as a child. So like kind of what was your mm -hmm. upbringing with Smash? Like, how did you get into this? Okay, so um, when I was super young, I ended up playing Smash Bros on Bro, talking and playing at the same time is just throwing me off already. <laughs> uh, I'd go over to my friend's house to like play Brawl or whatever, and um, I, I kind of got experience with that. I think it was my 10th birthday. I was at Best Buy or whatever. Okay, my dad okay. was like, go pick out something. And I was like, okay, bet. I, I picked out some random game, probably Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And um, on my way out of the store, I saw someone next to me like with Smash Bros Brawl in their cart. I was like, wait, I'm going to go get that. So That's because I saw that game. person walking out with Smash Brawl, I was able to buy the game, and then that kind of started my upbringing for Smash. Okay, okay, that's and, awesome. Uh, and I didn't realize Brawl was the game that it was, but something funny is like, I had the biggest um, challenge, or it, it was a hard upbringing when it came to Smash Bros, because I didn't really make a name for myself until Ultimate, despite being a player in Brawl, despite going the entirety of Smash 4. Mm -hmm. But, um... It's funny, like, I, I was looking up guides on how to improve at Brawl or whatever, and um, for some reason, no character clicked with me but Meta and I. I was like, oh, I wonder what's up with that. <laughs> oh, I see how it is. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> so, even as a casual, I could tell that character was a little cracked. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Meta Knight, Brawl Meta Knight was crazy. Uh -huh. When it came to Greninja, um, it's weird. Like, I didn't really grow up with... Nintendo games, the classic way people did. Whenever you ask people why they play, you know, like Diddy Kong or Donkey Kong, they're like, oh, I grew up with Donkey Kong Country, all this. Bro, I was playing like every movie video game. My childhood was Chicken Little, the video game for the Xbox console. Oh, that's crazy. And apart from that, I picked up Pokemon. So I knew literally no one on the menu mm -hmm. but the Pokemon. So I was like, okay, I have no idea who Roy is. I have no idea who. Lucina is, let me just pick up the frog that I like. I mean, like, what kind of, like, made you gravitate towards, like, 
the the frog rather than like a different Pokemon, like Pokemon Trainer, like you know something like that. I actually did play Pokemon Trainer in Brawl. He wasn't in the game in four, so I went to Greninja, who I chose as my starter. Mm -hmm. And then in Ultimate, I was thinking of playing Pokemon Trainer whenever the game came out, and then I eventually went with Greninja. Okay. Okay. But, um, got you. Got you. I, I really love Greninja. I think that he has one of the most flexible kits out of any character in the game. And uh, the fact that I'm still learning more and more about this character, you know, we're past five years of release at this point, it's really a testament as to how flexible and how dynamic his kit is. And I love being crafty, so that's what I went with. Okay, yeah, for sure. I, I definitely love Greninja. Like, he feels like you can just kind of be very creative, I, I feel like. And it's, it's really fun to just kind of play him. So you said you weren't really competitive, and you did you play in tournaments in Smash 4? I did, but um, something weird about me is I hate spending money. Okay. I, um, mm -hmm. and so because of that, I did play in tournaments. And on top of that, I live in Texas. Everything is a 40 minute drive at least oh in one gosh, direction or another. That's crazy. I'm from Houston, which is the fourth biggest city in the U.S. So whenever I want to go somewhere, I have to drive a ton. Mm. So, um, I did play a bit in Smash 4, but I didn't really start to get into competitive with until um, my college scene came around because whenever you have College Smash Bros, it's literally right on campus. You take a bus right there and it's free entry. So uh, to me, it would have been dumb to not take that opportunity. And um, I studied in College Station and College Station Smash is a very, very good scene. Okay. Uh, we gotcha. have uh -huh. a solid like, yeah, you'll look at our entrance. You wouldn't expect this, but we get like 64 entrants per tournament. Wow, that was just in college? That was just in college, so... Dang, okay, so yeah. was that a lot of, um, like, college students, or was that, like, uh, also, like, top players from the area and stuff? There were, they were mostly college students, but there was a good number of top players that would come to visit us. Um, we have players like Renegade, who's um, an Austin Snake player. We had um, Baker, who is a Bayonetta player. Um, a lot of people end up competing in that region. And also, um, our scene has a player that's like really below the radar that's cracked. Uh, his name is Black Screen, and he's an Ike player out of all characters. Oh, and okay, uh, uh -huh. he has no name. Like, not necessarily he has no name, but he's so unknown. And um, every time we have a regional, he'll be playing against Mudeace and going last hit oh my against gosh, Mudeace crazy. out of all players. I'm so dumb. I'm, I uh, wrong literally character. Greninja. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like Greninja habit came out so hard right there. <laughs> With the like competing and stuff, you said like, how did you do in the tournaments? And um, at the time, like during Smash Four, did you play Greninja or was it like something else? I did. I did play Greninja, but um, for the longest time, I had such a struggle because for me, whenever I play Smash Bros, um, I think I'm kind of the opposite of most players in that. Most of my time in Smash isn't in Smash. What I mean by that is I don't play online as much as I do research. Um, so if I were to learn the Captain Falcon matchup, it wouldn't be me going in to play against Captain Falcon. It would be me going through all of the resources like character discords, VODs, um, all of this. I'm a very analytical player. And to me, I find that I get most of my improvement outside of the game. Whenever that was the case in Smash 4, it, being a competitor was really tricky and I didn't really have my glow up until probably last year. I was going two and two at, at every tournament and uh, there's a tweet <laughs> I put out. You can find this. That was hard on me, bro. Oh, the yeah. The fact oh, that yeah. I've been playing since Brawl and, um, you know, I, it, it was weird because I kind of had a reputation to fulfill as I'm the guy that's teaching how to play Greninja and everyone's kind of looking up to me. I'm going two and two and I'm dash attacking on shield. So I was like, okay, I need to fix something. And I finally found um, the way to fix it through um, a bunch of stuff. But I, I could probably go more into detail, but when it comes to competing, I never really had that glow up until like very recently. And um, through my efforts, I was able to get 11th on the PR in College Station, which I will take. And um, uh -huh. that's a huge like glow up compared to going two and two now i'm getting top five consistently at tournaments of 64 players 
Dang, that's crazy. I mean, that's a huge glow up for sure. Uh, do you feel like you're more like, cause there's a lot of people that will be like more like kind of, they'll want to coach rather than like actually, you know, they, they like the game, they'll uh -huh. play it, but like they're more like the coaching or like, I guess kind of commentator as well goes into that. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that's like you resonate with that more? Um, I definitely believe so because for this past year, I gave competing an honest try. And in my experience, I don't necessarily enjoy competing as much as I enjoy, you know, developing content, pushing the meta for a character. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's a lot of behind the scenes work. And it's not just like um, coaching because I have tried coaching. And to be honest, I it, it sounds bad, but I don't have too much patience for uh, lower level <laughs> players <laughs> like um, I one time I, I was coaching someone and uh i was like hey you might not want to f smash in neutral and he goes oh those were all reads and he was doing this uh, in neutral no. like, oh, I'm like no stop <laughs> you gotta you gotta listen you gotta listen you gotta listen i know <laughs> yeah that's the hard part with like i i've definitely had like my fair share of like trying to help people get better and some sometimes it's just really hard and i, and I honestly just say like hey like sometimes you just gotta play the game more you gotta you really, you really got to get beaten down to understand like why that's a bad option, you know. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Whoa, I, is I, that I, a joke? Uh, okay. I, I don't Push even in the know. With that <laughs> 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 All right, uh, I'm rubbing up on it. <laughs> Honestly, I I love just like going for for school stuff, and so sometimes I'll just like accidentally do stuff, and it just kind of works. Back to the coaching thing. Um, so I mentioned that I'm not the biggest fan of coaching lower level players. But with that said, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I have given coaching to top level players. Um, most recently, I've been working with Ice Knight quite a bit. Really? Okay. Um, uh -huh. Ice Knight, he is a homie. Um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll pretend to have beef with him on Twitter. Like one time <laughs> I was asking uh, Greninja players, I was like, who do you want me to analyze on stream? And I didn't put Ice Knight on there. That's and he funny. goes, what about me? I said, no one asked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, I, I've been working with him. He's a homie. He's always helping me out with uh, matchup breakdown projects. The snake guide, he was the reason that I put an entire like 15 minute section on playing long range against snake. And it's very mutual. Um, through content creation, I've learned that relationships are absolutely everything. Being able to collaborate with others is massive um that's the reason that i've been able to recently work on the summer of matchups project where i'd get with some top level representatives of their characters uh for example i've worked with sinji for the pac-man matchup i've worked with uh purity for the bayo matchup mm -hmm. um who else there's a bunch of players I dodgers for the diddy matchup having those connections is everything to me and um because of that, you're able to bounce ideas between players, and that's kind of the reason that I'm supposed I'm able to give input to players like Ice Knight, Acid, uh, Tobe, and it's not like I'm charging coaching where I'm like, pay me $15, I'll look at the set for you. It's mm -hmm. the information that's more valuable than the monetary gain for me. Okay. And I feel like that's also, is it also like a part of the love for the game as well? Like you want to, and also Absolutely. love for Greninja, like you want to see him do better? Absolutely, man. Like, okay, um, awesome. it, it's weird to say, I feel like my love for the game kind of gets misinterpreted a lot of the time, <laughs> but mm -hmm. it, it's kind of for clout points. Um, I'll give you an example. I wrote a, I love the game so much. MKLeo picked up Greninja and everyone was asking me like, hey, um, what do you think of MKLeo's Greninja? And I'm not a fan of, okay, let me sit down and watch this VOD live on YouTube and get 40 minute mid ad rolls. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I did was I made a breakdown of it, but on top of that, since I know that some people would want to look at my feedback of his game, I ended up making a 181 page write-up on MKLeo's set against Epic Gabriel. And I posted it on Twitter because he didn't respond to the DM. I was like, hey, I made this VOD review. You might want to check it out. Next thing I know, it's like front page of Smash Reddit. Twitter user writes 180 pages on MK Oh my gosh, Greninja. really? And everyone's like, wow, this guy's writing more than my dissertation paper. Like, <laughs> does he do VOD notes? My Sonic Ditto needs some help. Uh, stuff my like Sonic that. My Sonic Ditto? That's crazy. Nah, but not anyways. <laughs>
yeah. But it's really the love for the game that lets me push it and um, be able to develop things like that. Okay, okay, that's awesome. Um, I love that like you were able to do all that and like that's that's just honestly crazy. But like I love that you were able to like make connections and honestly I have a um oh, I thought that worked. I have a person in my Discord who has been like really trying to study Ice Knight um because of um i forget what tournament it was but like recently he did like really well i think um, i think that was warehouse where he played against um mk leo sky j and all yes guys. yes yes and so there's been someone that's like really been paying attention to them and so i'm sure that they're gonna love that like you've been like helping like coach them a little bit absolutely um i was actually helping ice knight before warehouse mm -hmm. it's weird um Top players, a lot of people look up to them on this pedestal. They don't know everything about the game. They're players just like us. And Ice Knight is one of the players that is like most accepting of that fact. Um, every time you hit someone up after they lose a set, they're like, bro, give me 10 minutes. <laughs> like, don't right, talk to me right now. Right, right. He lost a set against a snake player. And I said, hey, not to like call you out or um, I, I don't mean any ill will by this, but could I give you some feedback on snake? And I ended up making a paper, VOD reviewing, and he took notes from that. And then recently, before that uh, tournament against MKLeo, he reached out to me saying, Hey, I need help against Sonic. Mm -hmm. Can you review this VOD for me? I was like, oh, I've reviewed it already. Um, but let me go ahead and write more notes in detail. Knowing okay. that you don't know things is massive. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people... I, I feel like I'm throwing shade at everyone, but toning down the ego does so much for you in Smash. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure, definitely. So I do think that, like, yes, having the, like, hum, I'm dead again. I just did the same mistake as last game. <laughs> but honestly, like, it's it's uh, hard not to turn the brain off. <laughs> um, but yes, so I do think, like, yes, having that, like, humbleness in the, like, not knowing everything is, like, a huge thing. Because that like, I feel like... A lot of people, and I've seen it, a lot of people will like get mad after they lose and it's like, oh, I shouldn't have lost to him, I shouldn't have lost to him, you know, like, um, mm -hmm. I'm way better than them. And it's like, well, if you just take a second and understand why you lost, you can work on counterplay, you can work on growing yourself and not like falling into that again. And then they just like lose again, you know? So right. I, I think that's a huge thing for sure, especially in yeah, mentality. Mentality is something that, um, I've personally not really struggled with, but I know so many people that struggle with mentality. They struggle with mentality and um, it really affects their ability to play in tournament. For me, there are hard losses, mm -hmm. but taking a loss does wonders for your motivation. It's kind of like that meme where it's like, you pick up the weights after the 15 year old that had the breakup and it's like <laughs> 120 pound dumbbells on each side. But um, taking that loss, is insane for your motivation. It's not about what you win or lose, it's about how you respond to those situations in play. Mm -hmm. um, most recently, I had a really hard loss against a Pac-Man player, and because of it, I wasn't top 10 on the PR, I believe. No, um, really? I ended up losing to him, and it was rough. The way I lost was I countered his side B off stage, I got the kill spark, I died first. Um, um, was it because a, uh, of that, did you spike him or like what? I, I spiked him and I ended up dying first from um, the side B. Oh, that's because of that, I ended up losing the set and I couldn't, you know, break my performance of getting top five. But um, I took that loss and I said, you know what? I'm going to work on the Pac-Man matchup. And the amount of stuff I found on Pac-Man as Greninja is insane. Like, um... There's a solid like five clips of mine that ended up on beefy smash dudes that week of Greninja Pac-Man. That's crazy. I mean, that's that's great though, because um, you know you're able to like conquer that kind of. Oh, I'm dead. Okay, you're able to like conquer that uh, that loss and just kind of like move on from there, which is which is great. That's what a lot of people need to do. Ah uh, no. Um, but yeah. So okay. Um, I wanted to ask you what you thought Greninja's hardest matchup was, and I know that that can be like kind of relative like you know person person but, yeah uh, and like also like very opinion based but like what do you think is his hardest matchup okay so um a lot of people have asked me to make a matchup chart on greninja and i'm personally not a believer in matchup charts or tier list and the reason for that is that i believe that anything is possible as long as you're confident in your skills as a player 
So a lot of people end up debating like, oh, is Mithra top two? Is Joker top two? That doesn't matter. What matters is you're playing the character, you're on the sticks, and everything that you do with that character is a result of your effort. And whenever it comes to matchups, simplifying the most complex subject in all of Smash to a number is literally, in my opinion, such a disservice to the game. And um, it ends up being the source of a lot of controversy. Like, a lot of people argue, oh, Greninja doesn't lose to Bayo, Greninja doesn't lose to Diddy, and nothing comes of these arguments, and you just see all the Twitter beef. True. Um, so, to me, a lot of people don't know what they don't know. The same way we were talking about competitors reaching out. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of matchups are still incredibly underexplored. And because of that, it's hard to say what I believe is the hardest matchup for Greninja. Okay. Because I could say something like Wario, but, you know, being able to lab that, um, I spent a week labbing Wario. Greninja has insane stuff against Wario. Like, he has a ledge trap that covers every option. Uh, he can kill with bike on ledge at 50. Uh, his juggling game is really solid. His juggling, um, his ledge trapping is great. There's a lot of stuff that's underexplored about characters, and a lot of people love to just blame the matchup rather than putting in the work. And it's really prevalent even at the top level of play. It's very simple things, like not to call them out, but the fact that we've gone five years without knowing that Greninja isn't able to throw Wario's bike to the left, that tells me that we haven't been putting a, enough resources to the match. Well, I feel like no one really explores, no one really knows that until you like actually lab it. And like, you're the only one that's really doing that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, a, a lot of people tend to ask me what the, my process for labbing is. It's just thinking creatively and having ideas. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of interactions that a lot of people glance over. You'll see, see things like WTF moments in Smash compilation number 48. Um, I love looking at those. I'm like, okay, why did this happen with Pac-Man's Hydrant? Let me look at this interaction. Mm -hmm. um, I could actually showcase one of them right now. So I was playing in Friendly's the other day and there was a Sheik that vanished on me and the wind box hit me and I shadow sneaked out of it. So try to hit me, or can you space vanish and try to hit me with a wind box? That. Okay. Uh, so I'm not sure if you can see that interaction. Anytime Greninja gets hit by a wind box, whenever he's in end leg of Hydro Pump, he can cancel it with Shadow Sneak. That mm. works with so many things like Fox's laser, Olimar's Pikmin. So against Olimar, you can zoom across the stage with Shadow Sneak and Hydro Pump. But if I were to see that as a WTF interaction and not go back on it, I would have lost the opportunity to develop the meta and find that tech for him. It's very tiny things, like the fact that I'm able to use forward air, and if I walk forward, Greninja gets a spin animation. Mm -hmm. Try to grab me out of shield. That have, spin animation yeah. shifts my hurtbox backwards. It's things like that that people don't take the time to look into in my opinion. Yeah, I have seen, I saw that video that you did about that, and I was like, that's very interesting. That is, it's pretty cool. I do feel like yeah. not a lot of people lab, like they don't lab enough, to like really like try to figure things out, you know? I'm a player, I, I know that you said like you like to go in the lab and you like to um, like actually, you don't like play online too much, but like I'm a player, I actually like fiend online. I actually like play like religiously almost. And everyone has a different approach to the game. Like part of the reason um, that me blowing up took so long was because I was in the lab 24 seven. And uh, it's funny, like, I was talking to Rahan, a French Luigi player, and uh, he said, hey, I'll offer you a VOD review, let's sit down and watch a VOD and work on your weaknesses. I was like, okay, bet. He was like, bro, you are not adapting. <laughs> I was like, what's that? <laughs> so, what, is, what is adapting? <laughs> yeah, so anyways, because I was able to turn my brain on mid-bracket, like, you know, that made the world of a difference as opposed to, okay, let me go for this optimal coverage that covers everything except this option. Oh no, they chose that option. Okay, let me try it again because it's optimal. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. A lot of people just are able to play by feel and I have a respect for that. But whenever it comes to, um, you know, like learning interactions and pushing the meta, I feel that there's a fine balance between feel and doing research on your own time.
Yeah, I feel like I feel like you need to have both. You need to have like the feel for it, but then also at the same time. Oh, oops. Um, you have to like understand like there are certain things that just like can net you the stock in this situation. Um, I know that we kind of talked about like you know a little bit of like um your mindset with like how I I I'd probably say like your mindset with like how Greninja is in the meta is like it's just all in the hands of the person that's like playing him at the time, right? Is that is that right. your opinion? Okay. So, um, what would you say are like Greninja's like biggest strengths that help him? So, I think that Greninja's biggest strength. Every character has some sort of X factor. Whenever you think about it, um, a lot of people are like, okay, there's Steve back here. There's Steve's walls. There's Daisy's banana. Greninja mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily have cheese, but what he has is top ten movement attributes across the board in literally every category. Um, top two jump height is insane. Top ten air speed is insane. Top ten run speed. If you dash lock with Greninja, he has the best initial dash in the game. And mm -hmm. this goes half the stage. A lot of people don't look at Greninja past his moveset. They're like, okay, dash attack is weak on shield. His aerials are reactable because he has to do them when landing. Greninja's movement is an insane buff to the character that not many other characters have the chance to fight against. And um, I really do believe that Greninja out of every character I've seen, has the best movement across the board. Okay. Now, that mm -hmm. might be a controversial take because there's characters like Sonic, there's characters like Fox. You have to look at areas where these characters don't have movement attributes that rival Greninja's. While Sonic does run faster than Greninja, his jump height doesn't let him punish Greninja's full hop. You can jump over spins, get center stage, and whenever Fox is playing neutral, the combination of his poor airspeed and slow fall speed or poor air speed and high fastfall speed means that doing this means that he will never hit you with a landing aerial. <laughs> a lot of people look at Greninja mm -hmm. on a purely move-based perspective, and I've always preached movement is the most important part of the character, and if you're not moving with Greninja, if you're relying on your shield options, it is really a detriment to you as a player. I'm a really bad, I played Smash 4 a lot. I played Sheik in Smash 4. I shield a lot. And you like if you ever if you were to analyze my gameplay, I feel like you would honestly pick apart my shielding. Um, and my friends always roast me about it because they're always like, "Stop shielding! Stop shielding! Stop shielding!" Um, yep. And so I feel like that's definitely something that I have to work on. It's so ingrained in my brain. But I do think that yes, you're totally right with like movement. Greninja's movement is crazy, and you need to always be moving and make it really tricky for the opponent to hit you. Absolutely. A lot yeah. of people like. Their go-to complaint about Greninja is he's slippery. Mm -hmm. um, another issue, um, I, I feel like it, it goes back to mentality, but the way my mind works is I don't necessarily have weaknesses if I can even out with the opponent. So a lot of people talk about the fact that Greninja's, you know, aerials, they all have to be a land. If uh -huh. I try doing this on you, I miss. If I try doing this, I miss. The thing is, all of the opponent's aerials have to be landing on Greninja as well. Like, try to hit me with a back air rising. Boom. I'm oh. good. <laughs> so, because of that, uh -huh. Greninja's low profile is an incredibly overlooked part of the character, in my opinion. The fact that if you don't jump whenever you cross up someone's shield, they don't have an out-of-shield option to hit you, it's insane for Greninja and not enough people abuse it. They look at the moves within his kit, but they don't look at his attributes as a character. Yeah, so I definitely I definitely do agree with like the movement, right? His, his, his movement is just honestly insane. Greninja, I feel like it's just like a speedy, like really hard to hit character. Ah, uh, you got me. That would have been crazy if you would hit something like that. <laughs> no, I, I got the log tech off of that. I, I love doing stuff with log, bro. Oh, really? Like, um, Having log at ledge is such a cheat code because if you get up attack, it's laggy and now I can react and punish it. Um, I can extend the hitbox of forward smash to cover every option with correct timing. Mm -hmm. it, it's tiny things like that that people don't think about this character. Ah, I tried to hit your, your jump there. Um, okay, so yeah, um, I definitely do like, I I think I agree with a lot of the stuff you're saying there. Um, like, you know, Greenwich's like movement is like his best option, or like his best like, um tool but yes i do think that like greenwich is like a really just solid character like he he can just kind of like bring back like a lot of things <laughs> i try to do the same thing to you <laughs> um so do you think that you like ah so 
what would you say like you as a oh no okay i'm trying to think of like how to word this question um so what would you say that like you as a player um would like want to work on the most with your greninja like what do you think is like your probably like, um, biggest weakness on it oh man um and this so is, this, for this, me uh just like a quick cl clarification the reason why i'm asking this question is like to put into perspective for like other people um so that way they can like maybe like if they resonate with it if you're like what you say is like your biggest weakness that they can try to um like resonate with that and see like what they can do to like improve their gameplay as well okay so um the problem with me is that i don't have one weakness i have multiple and i'm gonna out myself so <laughs> when i start competing we can find it again but um th there's a lot of things um i think that organization is insanely useful you talk to top level players and you're like okay what notes do you have on warrior and they're like oh go watch my bots um mm -hmm. so i personally keep a document of all of my weaknesses and right now, the one that I'm mainly working on is dash back, dash in. People don't consider this. This movement option sucks. I've um, heard, I've heard, so I've heard. The problem is Greninja's dash back is really good because I can whiff punish with dash attack. I can place down tilt. I can pivot grab. If I dash back and do dash in out of habit, if you try shooting where I am with dash attack, suddenly I'm in your face and you can hit me and I ruin the purpose of this dash back mm -hmm. versus doing something else uh, i'll be fine and the way that i'm circumventing this is replacing bad habits with good ones and the way that i break this habit is instead of dashing back i love doing this input right here reason for that is because whenever you're in crouch it's not like shield in that you have access to dash attack frame one you have access to down tilt you have access to jump you have access to dash back you have access to every one of your moves whenever you're crouching. If they hit you for overshooting that dash attack, this reduces your knockback. Greninja is already very short. If they try using Rising Aerial, they have to time it perfectly, and now you can low profile and place down tilt. So while this is a bad habit of mine, replacing bad habits with good ones is the main step to improvement in my opinion. Okay, so I, I really like that answer because I know that on Twitter you had just discussed this. Like I literally saw like a, exactly. a day or two ago or so, like very recently that you were literally talking about this. And I like that this is like, you identified that this was your weakness and you're like, hey, how do I fix this? How do I circumnavigate that? And you like, you came up with this solution for it. And so it's mm -hmm. just really cool that like, I didn't I honestly didn't expect that to be your answer, but it was cool that you presented like you found that answer for yourself and then you also presented it to the people as well. Yeah. Absolutely. In my mind, like Smash, it, it's a very gray game, but whenever you have a weakness, it's very simple to learn the counterplay to it or like to find an answer to it. Smash is so great to the point that there's counterplay to literally every option in the game. So mm -hmm. saying that you know, you can't deal with Sonic Spin Dash, you can't deal with Steve's Walls or Diddy's Banana. It's really up to you to find ways to deal with it and then express creativity as a player while doing so. Asking questions, like people don't know how to ask questions. Um, every time you see someone asking for advice on the Sheik matchup, it's literally, how do I beat Sheik? It's not, what is the counterplay to Needles? Um, what are her common kill confirm setups that I can play around? It's very black and white of an answer that they're looking for. I, I think ledge cancels are incredibly slept on for Greninja. Like, it, he has so much mix-up potential of like, ledge canceling. I feel like, like it's, I it's need to practice hard to do, little, though. though. It's hard to do. Like, it's very, very specific. Yeah. If you find the right setups to do so, Greninja's ledge cancel game is insane. Like, um, mm. a lot of people, it, it's definitely a uh, balance. Um, Back when I was first finding lunch cancels, it's because Venia was doing a Sonic Breakdown stream. Uh -huh. At the very end, he said, check out this insane ledge cancel that I found. Roll, roll, Hydro Pump. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, bro, when are you going to be able to hit that? And I was You're like, right. yo, that's that made the spark. And it's because of that that I found, oh, I can, you know, abuse the buffer system with the C-Stick where I travel very slightly in a direction to find micro spacing to get right here and do that ledge cancel. Mm -hmm. If I wave land, I can do that ledge cancel because it puts me in a set position on this platform. If I dash in, 
Um, I think it's dash attack on the stage. If I dash attack, I can do that ledge cancel. It's mm -hmm. more and more applicable. While a lot of people were making fun of me whenever I initially found it, <laughs> it's always stepping stone. Like, mm -hmm. if I took that and I said, okay, what well, ledge cancels aren't worth my time, I wouldn't have found the number of things that I found with Hydro Pump. True, true, true. Uh, so do you feel like what you were just talking about, you said it was Vinia's video. Uh, so do you think that like that kind of sparked your like your creativity and like you trying to like hit the lab and just like try to find Bro, things or? I don't credit a single player to having more of an impact on me than Venya has. Mm, um, okay, I, I was I a Smash 4 player and Venya was insane in that game. Um, he was such a big inspiration to me. And I remember there was a glow up phase where I was like, all right, I need to grind out this matchup. Something's up. And um, what I did was I looked at Venya. I found a Twitch VOD or him playing against Ganon because I struggled against Ganon. And then I said, <laughs> uh -huh. whoa, look at all these footstools going on. And I took out my iPhone that night and I took notes on like every single thing. And that sparked my creativity as a player. And um, also Venya, he was one of the few players where he'd really let out interactions. You look at his VODs from 2019, he was pretty much the only one letting out Snake Greninja. He was the only one covering Greninja Sonic, Greninja Wario. Mm -hmm. And having that resource is massive. And um, on top of that, he was insanely good at Greninja. And to me, hot take, I think he's still the best Greninja to this day. Like if he were to compete, I think that he could go head to head with so many players. Okay, so what do you what do you think that like it's just like kind of how he plays the game and you think it just like is it's the cool. way that he sees the game, man. It's um he's very good at adapting and conducting research on his own time and his movement is insane. Um I recently had a phone call with him and the way that he described moving as Greninja is it's not necessarily the moves you use, it's how you use them. And that completely changed my mind. Like being able to mix up between not only, oh, Neron Shield doesn't work against Game & Watch, but you know, saying, okay, I can do lingering nares on his shield. I can do a Nair shield poke after only one four there. <laughs> Stuff like that by just mm -hmm. changing your movement ever so slightly completely throws off opponents. I think a lot of people tend to look for people that play in similar ways and be like, oh, I've seen this situation before and I know how to like deal with it, right? And so it's just that like slight little nuance that like you change it just a little bit and it completely throws off the other person. I feel like that's exactly. that's, a, that's a big thing in Smash. Right, you look mm -hmm. at Greninja's Tomahawk down tilt game, it's insane, man. Mm -hmm. Like there's a reason so many people fall for that because you're going for Nair the whole time. <laughs> right, it, right, exactly, exactly. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to like open the floor. Is there anything that uh, you wanted to like discuss or like talk about with uh, Greninja? I know like you know you obviously do your own videos and your own YouTube stuff, um, but there is is there anything that like you really think is like the thing that you want to talk about for like people? Because a lot of people that are probably watching this are like new players or like people like trying to learn Greninja, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so do you think that there's like anything that like would uh, be interesting for them. Um, we kind of discussed it already, but don't overestimate the importance of offline practice. Uh, Greninja is a very awkward character to get a control of. The fact that he has a top 10 fall speed and the second highest jump in the game, that throws a lot of people off. Um, so being able to go into training mode and practice very basic things like movement, knowing how to move around platforms is an insane stepping stone for you picking up Greninja. Okay. Again, movement is the most important part of this character, so it needs to be your priority. So definitely focus on movement. I do think that that's a very, very key thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you even like, do you compete a lot or is it just like you kind of go sometimes? Um, whenever I was in college, yes, but I haven't competed since I think April. So it, it's really like a matter of convenience to me rather than, you know, saying, oh, I'm a competitor. Okay. But uh, okay. with that said, I have played against some really good players in Houston. And um, I think I've made a decent name for myself. Some of the players that I've gone head to head with, uh, I'll throw out College Station first. 
Uh, we have players like Snail, who is absolutely cracked as an Incineroar player. Um, we have players like Pink. Um, by the way, something about College Station is we have like five Greninjas and it's my fault. Um, <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Like every time I meet a Greninja player, they're like, bro, I met you through the guide before I met you in real life. That's funny. And that's really weird to me, bro. Like. The fact that someone recognizes Appalachian at a local in real life is insane to me. Yeah, but I mean, um, hey, you're you're the Greninja guy, like right, like everyone everyone that plays Greninja <laughs> knows you. It's funny. It, we were on stream once, and there's a guy that commentates our streams, and um, he's just there to commentate, but he's really funny and doesn't know the most about the game. Um, mm -hmm. There was a time where, like, I was playing against Pink, and he goes, Wow, Pink is showing why he's College Station's original Greninja. <laughs> and the guy next to him was like, Unfortunately, he's not College Station's original Greninja. <laughs> That's hilarious. You that, that title goes to you. I know that you obviously, you work on YouTube stuff, like, all the time. And um, mm -hmm. before, before recording, we were kind of just talking, and you said that you were working on a big project. Um, would you mind, like, just kind of sharing, like, what that is, if anything? Yeah, so um, at the start of the summer, um, I released a project. It kind of went under the radar compared to, like, um, you know, Greninja can't throw Wario bike left. It, that's like <laughs> a double-edged sword of content creation. You pour your heart and soul into one project, and then you record, like, a seven-second interaction. And it's like, oh, that's the one that got 200,000 views. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. at the beginning of the summer, I released a project called the summer of matchups where every week we'd cover a new matchup that's commonly seen as a problem matchup for greninja players the way i found these problem matchups was by releasing a form in january and asking hey it's not about the matchup it's about you what matchups do you struggle with mm -hmm. and i took 10 of the most common matchups and each week i released a document um covering those matchups and I release videos alongside it that are kind of like short form, how to move against Fox, how to deal with Diddy Banana, uh, how to beat Petman Hydrant, and so on. Massive project that's been in the works since January. And I've kind of come to the realization in doing that, that people don't know how to learn matchups. Um, okay. Which is strange mm -hmm. because you look at Smash Ultimate and there's such an emphasis on the importance of matchups. You see matchup charts, you see people when it comes to stages, they say it depends on the matchup depends on the matchup mm -hmm. okay people okay. don't know how to learn so this next video i'm working on is saying you know what i'm not going to teach you how to beat diddy i'm going to teach you how to beat any character as any character and learn matchup i was looking at what videos exist of it already like the buzz for example he has a video on how to learn matchups i think it's like six minutes long and it's oh like this gosh. is everything you need to know about a matchup That's I uh, like Lord not... has a video on it, two minutes long. It's like, okay, that seems like a pretty good way to appeal to multiple people and, you know, kind of get something out there that's going to be very useful for players, especially in current day meta where people have progressed their characters so far to the point that now it's just a matter of learning how your character's kit interacts with the opponent's character's kit. Yeah, I, I definitely feel like the, the six minute, two minute is like not enough time. That's kind of crazy to like actually like learn how to like learn matchups do they actually like go like super in depth about things i clicked on larry's video and he said the way that i would see it is vod review look at where you're getting hit mm -hmm. i was like okay that's a good note what else and the video is right. like thanks for watching yeah okay okay so, i got you i got you yeah um yeah 35 minute like how to learn honestly sounds super great yeah with me i'm very overboard um i'm not like okay let me put out a quick paper yeah, the same way that i've been working on videos i've been working on these documents for the summer project i think i wrote literally ten thousand words on steve oh my um, gosh that's i'm crazy. never a i'm never a type of person where i'm like okay this is everything that i need tiny detail and it's kind of my fault i'm always looking at um every tiny minute interaction and whenever it comes to game plan uh people are like bro how are you gonna apply the fact that you know um whenever greninja head bonks on block you can directional air dodge into it and roll off the side of the block and get a nair inside the wall. I don't mm -hmm. know, but it's there. <laughs> I mean, the <laughs> knowledge is knowledge is key, right? Like every little bit helps and it counts. 
So I, I totally understand. I mean, you're not going to hurt yourself by knowing more. Right, exactly. I do want to get into the serious best of five. I am okay. going to go Greninja, and I know that that probably okay. sucks. No, that's completely fine. <laughs> I, I play it every day, all day. Anyway. You play it every day? No, but it's like one of my most because people hit me up. They're like, yo, I need to play against a Greninja. I'm like, all right, who do you play as Greninja? <laughs> oh, Station, we have seven Greninjas. I'm oh like, my gosh. And that's uh, definitely your fault. How are we doing this? Are you just going sweaty gamer mode? Yes, yeah, sweaty, sweaty gamer mode. Okay. We are we are all trying right. hard. All right, I'm going to do my best. <laughs> all right, let's 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 get into this. And hopefully all the right, people like luck. this. <laughs> Killed. We're on town. Yeah. I couldn't kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, good stuff, good stuff. Ninja thing, so. I think that, that F tilt caught me off guard the most. I didn't expect that to actually kill me. Yeah. Forward tilt is a sleeper move. Like near ledge, um, I angled it down as well, so it killed with rage. It's similar to dash attack in that it's a very small window to react in DI. And on that final kill screen, it wasn't the case there, but you can't react and change your DI on the final kill screen. So it's really good as a last hit move. Right, right, exactly. And plus, like, if you if you space it well, it's actually, like, pretty safe, right, on shield? It, it's very safe on shield. Yeah, yeah.
I didn't mean to do that. There's unfortunately some lag spikes that I feel like definitely helped in my situation. Oh, I'm sorry. I, feel I mean, USD, don't worry. <laughs> there was one that, like, I hit, I think I hit a Nair, and I was not going to react to to hitting it, right? So, like, I it was either going to be strong hit or weak hit, and I, get, I think I got weak hit, and the lag helped me, like, know which one it was. Oh, so I was able to sorry. get a down tilt right after, and I was like, okay. <laughs> All right, so what is that, 1-1 one, one now, I think? 1-1. One, one. Okay, it? all right. Ah, nice. Yeah, I, I I was just waiting for you to release it, and I was like, as soon as you release it, I'm releasing mine. <laughs>
Nice. Dude. <laughs> so, like, I kind of noticed, like, you were adapting. Like, you weren't, like, jumping as much as, as like, <laughs> I wanted yeah. you to. <laughs> um, but no, it, it's hard to catch Kodinja's jumps. Like, mm -hmm, <laughs> even Kodinja can't catch his own jump. <laughs> um, but, no, your your DI on my footstool downers was so good because, like, I could never. Right. I needed to go for something else. I needed to go for, like, a drag down upper, like, a back air. Yeah, in that position, um, it, it's not necessarily like, oh, let me avoid the combo. It's if I drift behind him, it's really tight for him to hit that forward air on right. reaction. So right, exactly. I'll take I the back air. I was because like most people don't do like I usually like ninety percent of the time I hit the fair. There, what I would say is like, um, this is me personally. I love going for the footstool in that position. If you go for the footstool, you can cover every tech option as Greninja by um, fast falling and then chasing with the down tilt. So are you saying like footstool after doing the footstool day or no? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sometimes I do do that. I can but show I, that to you. I like. mostly, I do do that, but I mostly ever do that when I'm like, I'm really feeling it. I want to style on someone. <laughs> And I know. I was yeah. like, that's why I was buffering directional air dodge. I was like, he's not tech chasing me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely good stuff. So, I just want to say thank you so much for being on on my channel. Uh, I really do appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. We gotta do this again, where like we can talk more about like Greninja discussion and you know all that fun stuff. Bro, um, I, I would love. I saw that you did a Hydro Pump lunch cancel video a while back. I would love to like teach you all the Hydro Pump setups. Okay, that would be great. So like, I I did the guide, but I feel like I'm really bad at doing guides. So mm -hmm. I don't really do them because I feel like sometimes I don't explain myself super well. Um, but I did enjoy making that video and it was mostly for me. So like I wanted to explore some type of Hydro Pump ledge cancel um, option. Um, and so that's why I did that video is like while I'm discovering it I'm gonna try to like say what I'm thinking what I'm doing and like teach you guys like what I'm going through kind of thing But yeah, it, it was a great sesh. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, like, of course <laughs>